afternoon or still bolts here. Uh, you will have to excuse me. I'm currently suffering from a most delightful vomiting virus. Uh, so I'm not in work. And subsequently I'm getting a bit bored, so I thought I'd do a review. And seeing as I've had numerous requests for him, I thought I'll do Sandwave. Sandwave shows up in Series 1 of Transformers. Uh, he's in More Than Meets the Eye episode, and he stays through it until Series 3. He's in all three series. I'm not entirely sure if he's in the Rebirth. I'm not entirely sure if you see him in the Rebirth. If he is in the Rebirth, then he's one of the very few Transformers to survive all four series. Most of them get killed off or just inexplicably vanish. Sandwave is supremely loyal to Megatron. Very, very loyal to Megatron. Uh, though not stupidly so. Because he keeps his mouth shut when Starscream jettisons Megatron into space. Uh, and then his own dreams of leading the Decepticon army uh, get shot into dust very unceremoniously by Hook when Hook turns round and says no one would ever follow an uncharismatic ball like you. Which, despite its truthfulness, is still a bit harsh. Sandwave, of course, has the Decepticon, the Decepticon uh, cassettes. Uh, and he and they are mainly used, obviously, primarily for spying, but in, with the likes of Rumble and Frenzy, they're use, also used for random destruction. Soundwave is very emotionless. Um, he has that very distinctive monologue, very mechanical drawl to him. Uh, incidentally, voiced by Frank Weller. Welker. Weller. Welker. You have to see my mind's gone. Who does the voice of Megatron? Uh, though Frank did actually have to have a vocorder for when he was speaking Mega uh, Sandwave's lines to get that proper mechanical deadpan sound out. After the G1 series, and after the Takara Headmasters, you don't really see Sandwave again. Uh, he's not in Beast Wars, though I think he does get a mention as one of the Beast Wars mutants. Um, I think he's a crocodile. I'm not entirely, uh, but I'm not entirely sure of that because I'm s I'm not really up to date with Beast Wars. He's not in Armada and he's not in Energon, though he is in Cybertron and he gets a very distinctive Sandwave style color scheme and Sandwave style face. Uh, he's very much distrusted by all the Decepticons. Uh, except for Megatron, who, Soundwave, to be honest, is pretty much the only Decepticon that Megatron trusts. Uh, because Soundwave will report back to Megatron every little thing that happens with the other Decepticons, what they say, where they go, and, most importantly, any hints of insurrection that might be brewing amongst the Decepticon ranks. So for that reason, he's not trusted. And he's not liked, but then he's, he's an emotionless killer. You know, he's not he's not really a likable character. But he's certainly never been one of my favourite characters. Um, I've I I was always very indifferent towards Sandwave. Um, Sandwave has an ongoing rivalry with Blaster throughout series two, uh, because they're both each other's counterpart for their respective factions. They're both responsible for espionage and finding out generally what the other's up to. And it, it culminates into an episode, I think it's called Autobot Bebop something like that, where they use their uh, their sonic energy abilities to slam each other around a bit. That episode also, of course, features Trax, uh, who is simply one of the coolest sort of what's going. Excuse me. I've done this video about 13, so I think this is actually take 13 now, uh, where I've just stopped and started because something I said wasn't right or something I said didn't feel right so I'm, I'm pretty much just going on through pure perseverance at this stage. On to the toy itself. Sandwave of course was a set tape deck. Uh, Imagine if they tried to redo Sandwave now. <laughs> the state of the art transforming machine. Uh, he transforms into a tape deck. He's more likely to be an iPod or something like that. Uh, and originally Soundwave was built for a Takara range of toys, of transforming toys that uh, were scaled models of home appliances. And of course Takara 
took that took took it took that design off them and put it into in a sand wave. Transforming sand wave is really quite simple. There's not much much difficulty with them at all. You fold the legs down, flip them forward, pull out the feet. Uh, the arms come round like that. The hands slide down, and the head flips up and round. And there you have oh, hang on, shoulder cannon. Very distinctive sound wave trait was the shoulder cannon. And there you have it. Generation 1 sound wave. Uh, as with most of the 80s toys, well, the, the, the mid 80s toys, he has a good bit of metal to him. His feet are metal. All the pins holding him in place are metal. And obviously the screws are metal. And that's really about it for Soundwave, to be honest, actually. Uh, because he's a tape deck, uh, Soundwave comes with little gizmos. There's a, there's a volume control on one side. Uh, there's this little slide here on the other leg, which I'm not entirely sure what that does. And he does have an eject button here. Though my Soundwave toy doesn't, the front tape deck doesn't open because unfortunately my version is actually very dilapidated and he, I didn't get his handgun. Uh, or rather, I got his handgun and I'm using it for shoulder cannon. Uh, so my front tape deck doesn't open and Soundwave could hold one of his cassette transformer buddies in his chest. Uh, the, a later Takara collection, uh, the later Takara edition could hold two. Now I like the toy, uh, much more so than I can actually honestly say I ever like the character. Yeah, he's very wobbly on his legs, which is why I'm holding him by, my, by his hands. Uh, because it looks much more similar to his cartoon counterpart than other toys did. Uh, if you look at the Seeker range, they really don't look like they belong as part of the... as part of the Transformers range, because they look very, very different, but mainly because they're all the old Diaclone models. But Soundwave does look quite similar to his G1, to his G1 cartoon format. And I think it's quite a nifty thing. It looks quite nice in either mode. Uh, with some Transformers, they don't look right in one mode or another. Usually they're robots, their alt modes are usually quite nice. But Soundwave looks very good in both. Uh, he's currently standing at the front of the shelf on my display. Standing next to Blaster, who, since I've done Soundwave, I'll probably do a review of Blaster as well. Not much more to say on him. Um, He's never really been what I said. He's never really been one of my favourite characters, and as such, I really only I re to be honest, I really only picked up Sandway for two reasons: one, because he's part of the original toy line, and two, because so many people have asked me to do a review of Sandwave, and I know they meant the G1 Sandwave, which is why I haven't done Cybertron Sandwave. One of the habits I don't want to get into is start doing two videos depending on the series. I mean, I know that. Uh, Sky Starscream ha already has uh, one video and will be getting a second. Uh, Prime has two videos, so I don't want to start doing the whole. Well, here's Prime for one, and here's another Prime, and here's another Prime because that's just. I haven't got any cassettes at this moment in time, uh, which otherwise I would have done. The, I would have added the cassettes to them. Though I do recall having a knockoff rewind at one point in my early childhood years. can't remember what happened to that though. But anyway, not much more to say on this. You will have to excuse the video if it is kind of dull, but as I said, I'm really not very well. But for now, hope, I'll, I'll be back hopefully when I'm, I'm all, all recovered and stop turning my insides out. And for now anyway, this is Silverbolt with Sandwave, signing off, saying adios, au revoir, I'll be the same.